This is Robert Liston, and he's renowned for being the only physician to have ever performed a surgery with a 300% mortality rate. That's right, instead of saving one life, he inadvertently took three. But before we discuss Robert further, it's important that we set the scene and understand why it was even possible for this to happen. Surgery before the discovery of anesthesia was a brutal and painful experience for patients. In fact, surgery was often seen as a last resort as the intense pain and risk of death made it a very daunting prospect for those who needed it. Surgeons of this time had to rely on a variety of techniques to try and reduce the pain of the surgery and carry out the procedures in a safe manner, all of which were fairly ineffective. Because of this complete lack of pain relief, finishing surgeries in the fastest time possible was often seen as paramount. During the 1800s, one of the most famed surgeons for their speed was Robert Liston. Liston was born in a small town in Scotland in 1794. He was raised primarily by his father after his mother died when he was only six years old. In 1808, at the young age of just 14, he enrolled at the University of Edinburgh. After just two years, he began his medical training under the esteemed anatomist John Barclay. In the years following, Liston became the house surgeon at the Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh. Despite his professional success, he was not well liked by some of his colleagues, and there was even calls for him to be banned from the wards due to his unpleasant attitude. After a series of disagreements with his peers, Liston left Scotland and moved to London where he was admitted to the Royal College of Surgeons. Liston became famous for his lightning fast surgery times, especially when it came to amputating limbs. He earned the nickname Fastest Knife in the West for his impressive speed in the operating room. It is even claimed that he had the ability to perform an amputation in less than one minute. According to British surgeon and author Richard Gordon, an expert on the work of Robert Liston, Liston at his fastest was able to complete an amputation in just 28 seconds. He would often challenge those present in the operating room to time him, saying, time me gentlemen, time me. However, Liston's pursuit of recognition as the fastest surgeon ultimately led to his biggest blunder. While performing a leg amputation on a patient, a procedure he had done many times before, Liston ended up completing the only known surgery in history that resulted in a 300% mortality rate. The operation started no different than any other, but as he brought his knife down to amputate the patient's leg, he accidentally sliced off his assistant's fingers. As you can imagine, this induced a fair bit of panic in the operating theater. That panic turned into fear amongst some audience members. When Robert switched instruments, he accidentally managed to slice the coattails off of a spectator, causing him to collapse from fright after having such a close brush with death. The blade didn't injure the man, but the close call was enough to induce a heart attack, and he unfortunately died shortly after. Both the patient and Liston's assistant also eventually died from infections caused by the incision his blade made during the ill-fated operation. This was by far the biggest embarrassment of his career, but it wasn't the only high-profile mistake he made. During the leg amputation of another patient, Liston managed to finish the procedure in a remarkable time of two and a half minutes, setting a new personal record for him at the time. If you have a pair of testicles, you may want to stop listening right now. In his effort to finish the surgery quickly, an unfortunate mistake occurred. In his haste, Liston managed to sever the patient's testicles, completely removing them from his body. It's no surprise that so many people wanted to avoid surgery. The mishaps of Liston don't end there either. In the case of a young boy with a red pulsating tumor on his neck, Dr. Liston initially diagnosed it as an abscess. However, his trainee surgeon disagreed and believed it to be a carotid artery aneurysm. Despite the disagreement, Dr. Liston proceeded with a swift lancing of the lesion, stating that he had never heard of an aneurysm in someone so young. Sadly, it turned out the trainee surgeon was correct and the boy bled to death due to the damages caused by the incision to the aneurysm. It is evident that Dr. Robert Liston was not without flaws in his surgical practice and that he made several errors, largely due to his determination and resistance to considering alternative perspectives. So with all that information in mind, you're probably of the opinion that Robert Liston was an awful doctor. But was that actually the case? If we're comparing him to modern standards, then yes, absolutely. There's no arguing that. But what about if we compare him to his peers of the same era? Dr. Liston actually had a very low mortality rate among his patients at the University College in London, with approximately 10% of his patients dying on the operating table, while surgeons at a neighboring hospital in London called St. Bartholomew's had a significant higher mortality rate, with around 25% of patients dying during surgery. 
With this in mind, it shouldn't come as a shock to you when I tell you that Robert was actually a highly sought after surgeon and was widely regarded as one of the best. His low death rates meant he would often have a large backlog of patients waiting to be treated. Patients often had to wait several days to see him and Liston would try to see every single patient regardless of their condition. It was well noted that he especially relished the opportunity to treat cases that other surgeons had deemed hopeless, gaining a reputation among his peers for always seeking bragging rights. In addition to his reputation for rapid amputations and low mortality rates, Robert Liston was known for his strict adherence to ethical principles. This is showcased in his confrontation with Robert Knox, who was associated with the notorious Burke and Hare serial murders of 1827 to 1828. Burke and Hare were body snatchers and murderers who provided anatomists with corpses for dissection. They are believed to have killed at least 16 people and Liston became suspicious of Knox believing that the cadavers he used for anatomy demonstrations may have been sourced from the killings. Accompanied by his students, Liston once stormed into Knox's lab and discovered the corpse of a young woman named Mary Patterson displayed in a compromising position. Enraged, Liston removed the body for proper burial. With this understanding, it becomes apparent that Robert Liston was considered a reputable physician during his time. And in comparison to some of his competitors in the surgical field, his reputation seems even more exceptional. Liston was also perceived by many as a trailblazer in the field of medicine. A number of his inventions, such as the bulldog locking forcept, are still employed in the present day. During the 1840s, the age of anesthesia-free amputations was drawing to a close. And in 1846, Liston performed the first public operation utilizing modern anesthesia. Robert was presented the case of Frederick Churchill, a patient who had been experiencing severe pain in his right knee for years. The only remaining option was amputation. On the day of the surgery, instead of immediately proceeding with the amputation, Dr. Liston introduced a new method. He pulled out a jar of ether, a substance that had recently been discovered to be useful as a surgical anesthetic by American dentists and doctors. He informed the audience that they were going to try a new technique to make the patient insensible. One of Dr. Liston's colleagues administered the anesthesia. He used a rubber tube to allow Churchill to inhale the ether, and within a few minutes, Churchill was unconscious. The assistant placed a handkerchief saturated with ether over Churchill's face to keep him under, and then Liston proceeded with the amputation. The amputation was completed in just 30 seconds, and Churchill woke a few minutes later to the surprise and amusement of the audience, asking when the operation was to begin. Ether was used extensively in surgeries and other medical procedures in the 19th century, and remained a vital anesthetic until the advent of safer and more effective drugs such as chloroform and nitrous oxide. Unfortunately, Dr. Liston would not have the opportunity to observe the progress of anesthetics. He passed away from an aneurysm within a year of performing the surgery on Mr. Churchill. Following his death, the Liston Medal for Surgery was established at the University College Hospital and was awarded annually for nearly 100 years after his death to recognize outstanding surgical achievements. Dr. Robert Liston's legacy is complex. The impressiveness of his low mortality rate during surgery throughout his career is often overshadowed by his infamous amputation that resulted in three deaths. However, it is essential to remember that he was a physician who deeply cared for his patients and was dedicated to improving their well-being. Throughout his career, he actively sought out and implemented new medical innovations, which undoubtedly contributed to advancements in the field. So perhaps it would be unjust to base his entire career off of a few isolated, albeit severe, mistakes. Thanks for watching. If you found this video to be fascinating, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video.